Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page one of Couture. Um, this is Graphic 45's latest DCE, and I've got some measurements for you. Um, we're going to do something different. So, looking at this collection, it really sort of spoke to me in an Art Deco kind of way. So, I thought it would be fun to use some of the traditional angles that you see in Art Deco for this album. So, with that... I'm going to show you that we are going to be using some angles in this and I'm going to show you how I came up with this particular angle. This is a graphic 45 flag from a sticker collection and I actually used this as the basis for the angles that I'm going to use in this album but you don't need one of these because I'm going to tell you what the angles are. So I started with an 8 by 10 sheet and I scored a half inch on both sides. Then I came in, I marked at three, and then down here, I marked at six. And it just turns out that if you mark it at three and six, you're going to meet that angle. So then I put it in my trimmer and I trimmed across. And then I'm going to separate these two. So this is page one, left flap, right flap, and if you put them together, they're basically the same thing, okay? So if you cut one, as I had indicated, we're gonna separate them like that. So again, you're gonna start with a 10 by eight. So it's 10 inches across, it's eight inches tall. You're gonna score a half inch on either end, okay? So that makes this now nine inches because you've scored a half inch across. Then you're going to measure three inches across and put a tick mark and six inches across. And that is three inches after you fold in your hinge. Okay, so fold your hinge in, measure three inches. If you do it this way, it's three and a half, six and a half. So fold it in, measure three inches, cut on your diagonal, three here, six here. Okay, now we're going to add these to our pocket page. And as a reminder, this is the uh, larger than usual. This is eight inches tall finished, and it is 11 inches across. So it's eight by 11 finished, okay? Okay, so this is gonna go flush on the left. And then this is going to go flush on the right, and you're going to see there's a gap here. And that's by design. Beautiful. Okay. So there's our left and right flap. So the next thing we're going to add, or you're going to cut, we're not going to add it right now, is um, this is actually 10, 10 by seven, 10 by seven. So you're gonna score it in half, so you'll wind up with a five by seven card, okay? The five by seven card is going to get installed on the right-hand side flap like so. So we're gonna take this point and find its location. Of course, we're not gonna install it right now, and that's because we have to decorate this panel first. The second card you're gonna need is an eight by six, eight by six, and you're gonna score it in half. So you're gonna score it at four. So you have a finished four by six inch card. The four by six inch card is gonna get it installed right here. And then we're gonna have all this beautiful space for photos inside. Okay, so that is it for page one. We're gonna set these aside because we're not going to install them until we decorate these um, these two panels. So again, you're going to need one 10 by 7 and one 8 by 6, and you're going to score these into cards. This will be a finished um, 5 by 7 inch card with the fold on top, 
and this is gonna be a four by six inch card, and this is actually gonna get installed horizontally on the inside of one of the flaps, okay? So that's it for page one until we get to the decorator paper. So let me shuffle those around, get it organized, and then we will come back and start decorating. Page one. Okay, everyone, we're on page one and we're gonna start decorating. So I've learned a few things after cutting a few pieces of paper that I wanna share with you, because you're gonna use these techniques over and over again. So I've, um, I think I've got all my panels um, picked out, but I do need to trim a couple uh, pieces. So I do want to tell you for this page, everything I'm using is from the 12 by uh, is 12 by 12, not the 8 by 8. So it's all 12 by 12 from the DCE. So I started with um, a 12 by 12, and then I cut it to height, which is just under eight inches. In my case, it is seven and seven eighths because I like a sixteenth inch border. Okay, so to come up with this line, I put my 12 by 8 or 12 by 7 and 7 eighths right in here and I closed my flap. I drew a line, put it in my trimmer, and, and I have this piece. Now this is going to go on this side, but I'm going to share with you. Basically, I used that same process uh, rep and repeated it. So for the cover, um, I had a 12 by 12. I placed it inside, traced it, and now, actually that's not my cover, I take that back. Uh, this is gonna go on the inside. Okay, I gotta start over. Okay everyone, it's Daphne. Um, we're gonna start working on decorating page one. So there's a couple of things I've figured out um, when I started to trim these papers down. So for page one, you're gonna use only 12 by 12 sheets. So this is 12 inches across. So the first thing I did was make it eight inches tall, okay? And before I sliced into it, I laid my 12 by eight in. I drew a line and trimmed it. And that's how I came up with this piece, which is gonna go right here, okay? So then that left this piece. So I needed to trim another piece to go here. So I wanted these two pieces to look the same. So basically I turned this over and traced it. So it's going to look just like that, okay? And that left this triangle for me. So this triangle fits perfect right over here on the right hand side and then we're going to add a triangle to finish this panel off, okay? So I'm gonna go over that one more time. So it started like this. I laid my 12 by eight into the page and I figured out this panel first. Traced it, trimmed it. Then I had this left over. So the next thing I wanted to do was make sure I had a piece that fit here. So I laid what was now this piece in closed my flap and traced it, okay? So I have one for the left and one for the right and that left this triangle and it fit right here. Now I did need to trim this down just a little bit to get it out of the hinge so I took a sliver off this side. So it should fit pretty well and you should be able to use all the pieces of your uh, 12 by 12 to get this much of the page laid out. The next thing I did was I took a another sheet that's 12 by 8 and this is going to fill in this piece and I put the 12 by 8 in, closed the flap, drew a line and I'm going to set that aside. This is what's going to get married up here, okay? And it's going to be color blocks, so we'll have a slight gap here. So once I glue this down, then I'm going to trim this to fit. That leaves me with this piece to cover what's left here, okay? So it's a little different, but um, like I said, I don't think the complexity is gonna come in. The complexity is not with the adding the flaps and the interactive elements. It's really with how we're trimming the paper out. And I just feel like I gotta keep, keep it fresh and new and do different things to keep you guys coming back for more. Now, if I'd done this right, this would be a continuous pattern, but I messed that up. Because <laughs> what I should have done was turned this pattern over 
um, and traced on this side and then laid it back down. And then I would have had a continuous pattern. But when I laid it down in here to draw my line, I laid it face up. So you have an opportunity to do that a little different. Lay it face down, get your first trim, and um, then you can have a continuous pattern instead of an interruption. But it just turns out with this pattern, it's not that obvious, which I really like it. I like this side too. Got to make sure I hit record. Yes, I did. Take some patience, because I think getting your pieces in, you know, with nice even borders is going to go a long way to making this look really good. Because it's really all about the lines. Okay, so now the next piece I'm going to lay in is this piece. And I'm going to check it one more time to make sure I'm out of the hinge area. And it's really close, but I'm going to do it. And I previously inked everything, and as usual, I'm using mahogany. I hope you guys enjoyed the last two Let It Be projects. They were very fun. That's a fun collection. Usually by the time I'm done with an album, I'm, I'm tired of the paper, and that was not the case. I could have done another project. I really like that paper. And this too. I really like this one too. I was actually anxious to get started on on this. I just really wanted to do something that, I don't know, sort of went along with the paper itself. And because this looks so much, you know, like the 20s and Art Deco period, I really wanted to play off that. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to lay this in here. And like I said, it's going to have a color block in it. And it's again, I'm, I'm meaning to sort of draw your eyes to these very classic angles. And um, I need to trim this to fit. So I wanted to wait till I got this in. And it is gonna have a straight edge on the other side. So yay, that's easy. Trying to be careful because I don't want to over trim. And that looks beautiful. Oh, I'm pleased. Okay, we'll get this down. So I'm going to swipe it and put it there. Okay. like that so now we need to cut this little piece out and we're gonna cut it from this so this came off of this side so your lines should work perfectly and they do so now it's just a matter of trimming this to fit
And of course, goes without saying that you want to trim the straight side. Okay. So I'm going to place this edge into my trimmer and trim down. Something's not right. Okay. Okay, that should fit. Okay, I think I need to take a little bit more out. Um, it's a little tight there, so I'm just gonna take another sliver off this edge, and I'm actually gonna do it with a straight edge because it's start, it's too wonky to go into the trimmer. So I'm just gonna take a sliver off here. We're gonna ink it and lay it down. Get all this stuff out of my field of vision and yours too. I think I think it's cool <laughs> I think it's really cool I got very close to the um, the hinge on this side so it feels a little thick all right okay so now I can see something I want to make sure I don't do in the in on the next one so when I tuck this under here and I traced it and I cut on the diagonal I can see it peeking out so the next time when I trace it, I'm definitely gonna cut on the inside of it so that when this flap is closed, you don't see it. I think it'll just be a little bit more interesting. Now we are gonna add some elements here that are gonna distract from some of that. So it's not that I'm gonna change it, but since you haven't made yours yet, um, do keep that in mind that when you trace it, you're gonna want to trim it on the left-hand side of that line. Wow, my, my glue is just making a mess. Sorry for all the crinkling. Okay, so now I've got a couple of pieces. It's always so hard to get those out. Um, trimmed out for the cover. And it's this piece and this piece. So it's gonna go like this. All right, and then we're going to put two photo mats in. One on the inside, one on the outside. And then I'm not sure yet, but I might put some frames on the main section, but I haven't decided. Okay, cleaned up. Nice and neat. So we're going to start by finding a 5x7 by bifold, and I think that's what this is. Okay, so you're going to start with a 10 by 7 10 by 7 score it 5 inches on the 10 inch side, and that's going to make your um, 5 by 7 card. And so it's gonna get installed like so. And I haven't put these two panels down yet because I have to think about where my magnet's gonna be. So the goal, or the design, is to have this five by seven corner kind of meet here. So that, so it looks like we're about a half inch off the edge. 
that looks about right. It doesn't have to be perfect, but roughly. So, and, and that'll help you decide, you know, how far up or down to go. So you need to come in about a half an inch and then slide it up or down until that corner uh, meets this panel. So given that, I now know I can go ahead and lay down this panel. I'm gonna check it one more time to make sure it's trimmed right. It's already inked. And I'm gonna put a magnet over here. And that P1R is page one right flap, just in case you're curious. That was for my own notes. Now this is gonna go roughly here. So I'm going to, I don't need to look at that. I'm gonna use my grid. Okay. So it turns out that that feather is right down on the um, half inch line. So that's a pretty good way to judge it. So it looks like I want glue from here to here. So if I do it upside down, I can draw a line here. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're looking for roughly a half inch, right? And then when I flip it over, it's, it's not right. That's not right. Hold on. Oh yeah, I got it backwards. So I need here and here. So my line is roughly right there. Yeah. Of course, I'm, I don't know why my glue keeps spitting up like that. Something new. If I have to lift it slightly and get more glue in there, I will. But right now we just need to kind of get it located and um, figure out where our magnets are going is going to be the next step. Just to be careful, I'm going to lay something under it so in case any glue squishes out, it won't, it won't make a mess. Okay, so I'm in about a half inch. That looks good. Straight to my pattern. Everything looks pretty good. Okay, so it's not all the way down and that's good because I'm gonna put something on the back side. Okay, so I now know I'm definitely gonna put a magnet right here. And get some of that tape. trying to think about what I want to do to close, excuse me, close this card. And I think I'm, I'm just going to add. Okay, so we have a couple of options. So I can add another magnet. 
which will make it super strong. Or I can try to get away with two magnets by placing the magnet here and having it pass through. Now, I have to keep in mind, we're gonna have cardstock here and here, so that's two layers. I'm gonna test it real quick. And what do I mean by test it? I'm gonna put layers between the magnets and see if it continues to hold. So I know I'll have cardstock here, cardstock on the back of the card, another layer of cardstock here, and another layer of cardstock here, and then a magnet. So my question is, will it hold through all those layers? And And yes, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get away with one magnet by placing it up here. It wants to jump to my desk because my desk is metal. Okay, that's too long. When I say too long, the tape was gonna stick out into the So we've got a magnet here and a magnet here. Okay, so one on the top of the card and one on this flap. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put this other flap in, which I have right here. Everything's closed nice and neat. Okay, so now we need to decorate our card and then the back of the card. Okay, I'm gonna save my little sliver so I can do tests later if I need to. So, let's see if I've got enough of this paper. It's not quite tall enough, but I can definitely use this side if I want to. It's wide enough. Let me see what else I've got. I have some of this, but it's not really going the right angle, and I don't like that. If anything, I'd want it to go up and down, and this piece is not quite wide enough. Um, although, I've got to think about that for a second. Uh, what do I think? Do I like the blue? What I really want is this. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my second sheet of this and cut out um, a piece that'll fit here. Okay, that's my last option. Is this. Yeah, this is a little too bold. Or did I already cut through both of them? I guess I did. Then I should have more of that paper somewhere. Oh, it's right down here. Good grief. <clears throat> Ooh. 
maybe. I think that's what I'll do. It's all pulled up. Let's see if the peacock looks good. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so this is five by seven. And so I know it needs to be five inches tall. And okay, four by five. And then I'm just going to put a tick mark on either end, trim it on a diagonal, and install it. And I'm going to trim uh, to the left of my lines because I've got enough to tuck under. It's hard to see. When I move over to my trimmer, I lose my pencil mark. There it is. glue it down and then I'm going to put a bead in there and seal that to the rest of the photo mat. And then save all these little bits because um, I want to use these to make some embellishments later on. And you'll see what I mean soon. Okay, so the next photo map we're going to do is we're going to install a 4x6 on this panel. Seven. So this, you're going to start out with an 8 by 6, 8 by 6, you're going to score it 4 on the 8 inch side, and that's going to make um, a bifold card for you. And all I want to do is line this up so when this is closed, this is covered. So I'm going to come down to about right there. going to go on that side. So I'm going to go ahead and put my glue here and close this flap and that's basically where it's going to go. Okay so right now I just want to make sure it's all straight. Okay. 
one, then we're going to put a little something, something right there. And I think I'll do a little bit of this. Okay, so I'm just going to ink it and then we're going to tuck it right under there. done. Coming right along. Okay, so we'll need to uh, do some decorating here and here. I'm going to take a break and line up my papers, clean up my workspace, try to figure out what's going on with my glue tip, and go ahead and upload what I have and get it ready for editing, and I'll be back shortly, you guys. Hey everyone, it's Daphne, and I'm back, and I've got my papers lined up, and we're going to finish uh, page one. Okay, so I chose this uh, to go on the top side, and I know it's a little bit dull, but I'm going to add something to it. So, it'll be pretty, trust me. And again, uh, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. I am using a 12 by 12 I said collection pack, DCE, and an 8 by 8 DCE. No, I take that back. I said that, and now I'm not sure. The pattern on the back looks... This is from the 8x8. 8x8. One of the things I like about this album, which I don't do a lot of, um, and it's partly because I'm trying to make good use of the paper, is I'm doing uh, almost everything is a 5x7 five, five by or a 6x6. Six by six. And even though it's a five by seven, you can easily put a six by six photo on it. And then you just wind up, you know, with a beautiful border around it. So that would be like a six by six photo, which I really like. Um, but when you cut your paper uh, five by seven, you, you can't, <laughs> you can't, uh, the seven is half past the halfway point. That's why, uh, increments of four work so well. Okay, so that's there. Inside, I've chosen uh, this pattern also from the 8x8. I forgot to ink it. And it's going to go like so, and because it's not enough to cover it, I'm going to use this pattern to um, add a border on top and bottom after I lay these in. So this is the small scale, the 8x8, and on the inside I use the same pattern from the 12 by 12. 
Okay. <clears throat> and I just cut this in half. So each panel is four inches tall by six and seven eighths wide. I've already trimmed this widthwise, so I'm going to just cut two slivers and I'm going to decorate the top and bottom. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to turn it all around so I can uh, bring this edge closer to me. And then we'll go ahead and mark and trim this. We're making it. Almost there. I'm just looking to, I just want this to be consistent. And it looks like it goes this way. Yeah. So it's not continuous, but I didn't want one to be right side up and one to be upside down. If that makes sense to y'all. Okay. So there is our top card with its photo mats. And then on the inside, we still got this one. Okay, so on the inside, I chose the black pattern, um, pattern, pattern paper. <laughs> so we're gonna put this on the inside, and I think it goes very nicely with the uh, pale pattern, pattern paper. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And on here, I think a three by five would be perfect. And then you still get the nice uh, frame around the photo border. Or you could just leave it cardstock and put your four by six in here and they'll fit perfect. Um, they'll cover all the black space. Or trim a, trim a fraction off and then you'll have a little black border around it. Did I put those in right? Mm, yeah, I did. Oh, no. Yeah, I did. Okay. Some of the patterns are right side up and some are upside down, so it was throwing me for a loop. And that's the back side. Um, I'm going to pull in the um, peacock feathers one more time. I'm going to cover up my ink before I make a mess. <clears throat> Okay, and so just to give you a visual, this is a five by seven that could fit here, and here is a um, four by six. So you've got three four by sixes here. You could have another one here, five by seven here. You could also put a four by six here behind this, which I think I might do. So you've got a lot of room for photos on this layout. So that is it for now. I'm gonna um, uh, pick out some embellishments. Well, actually, I've already got one layout. So I am using this ephemera card and it's gonna go right here. And I'm just looking for an even border around three of the four sides. And then I have a lot of room here and I wanna do some embellishing. Looks good. So I've made myself a little tag and this was just a piece cut from one of the pages and I've got um, some chipboard laying here and I also did some punches. So I think I'm going to fiddle around a little bit and come up with a nice little design here. And I think I want, I'm gonna ink this. I think I want to layer my tags. So put this one closer, bring this down and do something a little bit like that. So I'm still working on it in my mind. I'm gonna fuss around a little bit. Once I uh, come up with some decisions here, I'll come back and we'll put this, uh, this part back together or we'll go ahead and finish this part. So here I'm, I'm gonna leave blank because then you could put a photo here. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, I've, I fussed around and this is what I think I'm gonna do. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put my beautiful down here. Then I cut, I hand cut a, cup, a tag and then I used a die for this and I'll show you what the edges look like. Um, but you could just hand cut your dies if you want to. And this is two inches wide and this is two inches wide. And then this is a one and a half inch circle, and this is a one and a quarter inch circle. And the uh, designer paper I punched, and the black cardstock I just fussy cut around it. So those are my uh, designer elements. So I, the way I decided to place this is I'm going to actually match it up to the back of the card here. Ooh. I just thought about that. And if I do that, I probably want to put something on the back of the top of the tag. Eh, it looks okay black. If, it, if this wasn't black, I might consider it because it's going to show up a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this here, use this as my guide, and glue this down. So there we go. It's going to go. Like so. 
so. And I can just use that as my guide. Okay. So there's our first tag. And then, like I said, this is hand cut. Um, and I just did two colors. That's a piece of chipboard right there. And I'm gonna have that right about here. And everything is flat so far. I'm trying to decide if I want to create some dimension here. Let's see, I'm going to get a piece of chipboard and we'll take a look. Yeah, I kind of like it. So I'm going to add a little dimension. This piece is just going to go right next to the um, flap, and I want to be careful that it doesn't interfere when you open. So make sure you test it. Slide it over if you need to. Okay, so the next thing is... I think I like that. So I was looking at adding this on the bottom. I was kind of thinking of stacking it, but not that way, this way. And I think I like that. So I want it to be closer, so I'm going to cut a corner out. Ow! Boy, my arthritis is really giving me fits. Got an appointment next week to... Go see if the doctor can help me with something. My hands have been freezing up, so this is what I was thinking. And then um, this will cover up the top of it. What do you guys think? And then the last piece is going to be this these offset circles. Okay. Like so. I think I like it. So I'm going to tack this down. more off. This is what you do if you don't layer it the right way. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I don't pull my chipboard all the way out to the edge, because then I can do these little tricks. Okay, looks good. This one's going to be flat. I like embellishing. I don't I don't often do it because I feel like I'm always off to the next project. But uh, this is this can be a really fun part of projects. Okay. I'm gonna tuck this one slightly under. What do you guys think? And then the last piece. Actually, we need to put this in. I think I'm gonna go look at my other chipboard pieces.
We want whatever it is to be horizontal. I think I like that. I think I do. Okay, so we're gonna add some chipboard to the back of that. One side. Okay, and then I've got my beautiful here. So that's an option. And then this is an option. And I don't want this too close to that. So that's kind of where I'm hemming and hawing a little bit. I don't know. I'm not crazy about it. What do you guys think? I just feel like I need something horizontal here. I don't like it there because it's sticking out. Um, if it if I could get the whole word, it'd be different. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on this because I'm not sure what I want. This is a sticker, so I'm trying to decide if I like it. Way. I was trying to see if I could cut that sentiment sentiment in half and then put some red over on this side. And I can, I just have to, yep, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, it says fashion fades. I'm going to cut it there. Only style remains the same. We'll go under it. I'm gonna have to move that over and then Coco Chanel will go down here. So I'm just gonna adjust everything. That's gotta slide over a little. There we go. Got a little bit of red over here, just like I wanted. Now, of course, that could have gone up there if you wanted, but I like it overall, the balance. And there's plenty of room to add um, embellishments, you know, on the inside too. So my focus for the moment is going to be embellishing um, the top sides. So that's it for page one for now. Thanks, everyone.